In this video, I want to introduce you to the concept of the unit circle and the kind of things you can do with it. So let's just get started drawing one, and then we'll show you what kind of things you can do with it. So first, here are my axes, and then I'm just going to try and draw something that looks like a circle. Close enough, right? Oh, things are going haywire, but don't worry. Here. So, we have our origin right here. Positive y-axis here. And the positive x-axis right here. And this circle is the unit circle, but you don't know that yet. Because I haven't really shown you what kind of a circle this is, right? I've just drawn a circle. It becomes a un unit circle as soon as I tell you that the radius here, which is r, this radius is equal to 1. As soon as I say that, boom, we have a unit circle. Because that's the only extra requirement for a circle to be the unit circle. The radius has to be 1. That's it. So, let's say we have a point P here. Then the length of this line segment OP is equal to 1. Because that's just the radius of this circle. Okay. So, that's all fine and dandy. But the question is, what can we really do with that? Why would we want to construct a circle this way? Well, first of all, notice that usually we have a way of working with trig functions uh, in combination to coordinates of circles. So let's say this is an angle alpha. Then we know through this rule that you might remember, so katoa, that the sine of this angle alpha is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And if we look at the hypotenuse, that's equal to the radius. And if we look at this opposite side, so that would be this thing right here, we see that's really just the y coordinate of this core, uh, sorry. That's the y-coordinate of this point P here, minus 0. Well, that just means it's the y-coordinate, right? We can leave out the 0 part. So if we look at this right here, that means that this is y over r. So it's the y-coordinate over the radius. And we could do the same thing for the cosine. Cosine of an angle alpha is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, which is, well, in this case, it's actually just the x-coordinate. Again, we subtract by 0, so we can leave that out, because adding or subtracting by 0 doesn't really do anything. So that's it. Now, we're dividing by the radius here. We could also multiply both sides by the radius, and then we're multiplying by it. So... If we wanted to simplify this and say, well, we don't really care about the radius, we just care about the coordinates of this circle with respect to the trig functions. So imagine that you wanted to figure out some trig identities and you start, you wanted to express these trig formulas in terms of the coordinates. Because as you can imagine, you can establish relationships between the coordinates of different points on the circle. Well, in that case, you would have to factor out this variable r. And the way you do that is by setting that equal to the identity element of the operation that it right now it does. So let's say if we added or subtracted by r, then if we set r equal to 0, then this would kind of disappear because zero is the identity element of addition and subtraction. Now for multiplication and division, the identity element of that 
So the question is, when we multiply by something, when doesn't that do anything? Well, we actually know that already. That's when we multiply or divide by 1, right? Because a, or let's draw that like this, a times 1 equals a. We know that, right? And we know that a over 1 is also equal to a. So it just factors out this part when we set the radius equal to 1. So because we've done that here with this unit circle, of course, the people that uh, thought of this concept already knew these things in advance. So we drew this out in such a way that we can already do that. We can just write this in terms of these coordinates because r is equal to 1. And that's the identity element of multiplication and division. Perfect. So that gives us a way to express the coordinates of a point in terms of trig functions. Right? That's, that's pretty cool. So now whenever we make observations about the points on the circle, we can convert that to trig formulas. And that's, that's pretty neat. So let's just take a look at an example of that. Let's say we mirrored this point P through the y-axis. So we would get right here on the opposite side of the circle, right here. And let's call this point P prime. Now, as you can see, the height didn't change, right? So the height, which is the y-coordinate, is equal for both of these points. And for the x coordinate, we noticed that we flipped it. So now it became, instead of positive x, it became negative x. So we can write that down. And because we just did this, we have now this connection between coordinates and trig formulas. We can convert this kind of observation about the points to trig formulas. So let's do that now. But, well, first we have to figure out the angle of this line segment. Right? We do need the angle alpha here. We need to know what kind of angle that is. Otherwise, we don't, uh, we can't really use the trig formulas. They require this input angle. So what is that? Well, first of all, notice that this right here is alpha. So that's just the same. And also notice that the half circle is always equal to pi, right? We know that the full revolution is 2 pi radians, so half the circle is pi radians. So we, we have an angle of pi minus alpha. We just take away alpha from the f uh, half a circle. So the angle is pi minus alpha. So when we look at the y coordinate, that's the sine of the angle. And apparently that's equal to the sine of alpha, right? That's just the y coordinate of this point. And we can do the same thing for the cosine, because that relates to the x coordinates right here. So that's equal to minus the cosine of the alpha. Right, so we just converted each of these things to a trick formula using this rule right here. So that gives us a really nice trig identity, right? So now we know that whenever we have something that looks like this, like pi minus alpha, we can just simplify that to something in terms of just alpha. And that could be useful and all. Uh, so that really means that we have a way of converting coordinates into trick formulas. And we can come up with all these kinds of things. Uh, we could also, for example, have noticed that we can express the length of this line segment in terms of these line segments, right? That's what we learned 
when we learned about the Pythagorean theorem, we noticed there's a relationship, and we know we also learned what that relationship was. Right? The relationship is that this hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of these things squared. So that's the x coordinate squared and the y coordinate squared. And since this is equal to 1, right, 1 squared is 1, and we know it's 1 because that's radius, and we know that the x coordinate is just a cosine of the angle that uh, is between positive x axis and this line segment right here. And we know the y coordinate is the sine of the same angle. So that means we now have yet another trig identity, right? Just by making another observation, we notice that cosine squared plus the sine squared is equal to 1. So whenever we notice that in our equations, whenever we have something cosine of an angle squared plus something something sine squared, right? We know that that simplifies down to 1. So that's really, really cool. And it just goes to show you how powerful this unit circle is, because really we didn't do anything else to make a few basic observations, right? And just one thing I want to point out is that the unit circle is not very special. Really, uh, we could have done the same thing with any circle, right? We could have established a relationship between the coordinates of these points and the trig functions. But whenever we would have had an equation like this, we would have r on both sides. And then we could just factor that out. So we would have, have, have had to go through an extra step every time of factoring out the r and then get the same equation. So the unit circle, really the most important part of this is the circle part and establishing this thing right here and the relationship between the coordinates of the circle and the angles. That's really what allows us to figure out trig identities. The unit part just makes sure we can simplify it by leaving out this step where we factor out the r on both sides. So really the unit part of this just makes our life a little bit sim simple while this observation right here is sort of the meat behind all of our trig identities. Every single trig identity can be uh, proved using the unit circle or any sort of circle for that matter to show that, the, that they hold using the coordinates of these points. So that's, that's really interesting in my opinion. That, that gives us a beautiful way into all of these trig identities, which can lo look so arbitrary and vague, but when you sketch them out in the unit circle, suddenly they look so sensible and very quickly they become familiar. So I hope you found that useful and I'll see you in the next video.